how is how is Chad this evening? He's fine. He's a little tired. He has to go back to work in about an hour. Is he as tired as Ivan, who looks like hasn't slept? At all, because it doesn't matter what time of day it was. You look online and he's playing Skyrim. <laughs> okay, okay. First off, video game show episode 256. Joining us, we have Phil. Phil, say hi. Sorry, I was drinking some water. I am here. Keith. Hello. And Skyrim player, Ivan. Hello. So what do you think of I- Skyrim, Ivan? Go. Hold on a minute. I need to read my books. I own Skyrim too, by the way. I just haven't logged probably as many hours as uh, the Ivan. He did seem to be on a lot. You know, I saw him on Thursday and Friday. Yes. And Saturday. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's a good game. Is it everything you guys expected it would be? Yes. My only thing is, is I liked, like, it, it's the, the graphics are phenomenally better. Um, they did a lot of, they did a lot of, uh, changing with the, the leveling system. I like it now. It's just, you, you just get points as you use the skills and then you, uh, unlock perks. Yeah. You don't, uh, I'm sorry. I'm done now. Um, you don't get experience points for like killing things. You don't even really. There's experience points, but there's really it's just a bar. It doesn't really say you know you need ten more experience points till next level. Well, it's that's how many you need to level ten skills to gain a level. So when you use your abilities, your abilities go up in level, and as your abilities go up in level, your level goes up in level. And every time you level, you can put points into your magic ability, health, or stamina, and then you can pick. Uh, after you do that, then you can pick a perk, which is essentially like your, uh, your skill trees. But yeah, you could go and you could slaughter a thousand wolves, and you're not going to get well. You're not going to get any experience points from killing them. Now you will get experience points for using whatever skill you used when you killed them, be them magic or sword or two-handed weapon or whatever it may be. Yeah. So if you use a sword, you're one-handed sword you as you're killing them your one-handed sword abilities will go up in level therefore raising your level up in level so yeah they got rid of a lot of the tedious skills like athletics and mercantile and that they kind of combined a lot of the skills into other skills like speech is now your speechcraft and your mercantile skill kind of mushed into one. There is no athletics. Um, they got rid of blunt or blade. It's now just one-handed or two-handed. So they kind of streamlined a lot of the more annoying skills. And the way you level is anytime you gain any 10 skills, it doesn't matter what they are, you gain a level. But I, I do miss the press a directional pad hotkey thing. I'm not liking the little favorites. So, yeah, so that's, we can talk about that later, but you're playing on the 360, right? Yes, sir. Yes. And I'm playing on the PC. And the same thing, there is no quick skill thing. You know, you hit the, the Q button is the default button for your favorites, and it brings up a list of your favorites, but you still have to hit that button and then scroll through the thing you want and then click on it. You know, you can't hit, like, F1 to switch to your axe and F3 to switch to your sword or something like that. In the first one, you had the directional pad, so you had eight presets you could use, uh, at least for the Xbox 360 version. That's one thing I wish they would have kept over their favorites, but that's really one of the only things I can say I liked better about Oblivion. That's the only thing I could say I liked better about Oblivion. The monsters don't scale, which is nice. I've actually died fighting things in this game. Like, I ran out of town, and I just saw a giant. So I was like, f*** it, pulled out my sword, ran up to it. Oh, giants are tough. And just started stabbing it in the shin, and it just turned around and stepped on me, and I died instantly. It was, yeah, He's so they got big clubs, too. I did the same thing. I'm like, oh, cool, a giant. Because I had been slaughtering everything. So I ran up, and I tried to fight it. He hit me with his club, and he literally sent me flying so high up in the air that everything looked very small 
and I never came, I started falling back down, and it took me so long to fall back down that the game just reloaded my last save before I even hit the ground. It was hysterical. I wish I could have had video of that. Well, that was my biggest complaint with the first one, it was that it was too easy. Everything scaled, and from the very first fight to the very last fight, I pretty much killed. The only time I ever died in Oblivion was like when I was trying to make a cool jump, and I ended up in a sea of lava where I fell off the thousand foot tower. I never died from fighting. This game, you know, I've already fought a couple giants. I ran into a troll den. <laughs> uh, and one of the cool things that they, they changed, uh, so now there's like a whole archery tree. Yeah, I was going to say, how is the archer? Because I'm sure you made one. I did, and then, okay, so I'll get into that in a minute too. So yeah, I did start off making an archer. Archery is cool. Um, they fixed it so that before you could have a sword and a shield and you could have like blocking with your shield, but if you had a, a bow, you're essentially screwed. And if people came right up to you, your only shot at killing them was just to try and hit them with arrows faster than they were hitting you with their sword, which almost never worked because you can swing a sword faster than you can draw an arrow, draw the string, and shoot. So now you can use any weapon to like block. So if they're coming at you and they go to swing their sword and you time it right, you can hit them with your bow, which cancels their attack and knocks them back a couple feet. So you can do that and then draw another arrow and shoot. You still kind of have to, to do the, the kiting. You still have to kite, meaning you, know, you have to kind of run backwards and around in circles around them so that you can shoot them. And a lot of the stuff is kind of co close quarters. So it's kind of hard to do. Mages are a pain in the ass. Because some of the like adept mages are the higher level mages. And their spells do a lot of damage. And they have a lot more uh, hit points. So getting them is, is kind of hard to... When you get higher levels and you're sneaking, you get a bonus. If they don't detect you and you shoot an arrow at them from a, like a distance, you get like three times damage. And you can get a three times damage plus a critical. And you can do a hell of a lot of damage to them before they even know that you're there, so that's a bonus. Yeah, I'm, I don't know. if I'm only level 12. I am level 23, I think. Jesus <laughs> Lord. <laughs> I'm looking right now at my Steam library, and it says I have played for 33 hours. And the game has been out how long? <laughs> uh, since Friday midnight. So, I, yeah, I've been playing a lot. I did take a break yesterday to go see Immortals and go to the Boneyard up here on Mayfield. How, how was Immortals? Immortals was both good and disappointing at the same time. Keith, I, I don't think you... You would have a lot of problems with it because it takes a lot of liberties in Greek mythology. The movie itself is entertaining, but... Uh, Zeus kills Ares because Ares interferes with uh, mortal stuff. Zeus has always been about, you know, don't interfere with the mortals, let them deal with themselves. And in the movie, he's like, if anybody interferes with the humans, it'll cost them their lives. And Ares does it anyway. He saves the humans from a bunch of bad guys, and Zeus kills Ares. And I'm like, how, how, do, you, how do you kill an immortal god? How does that happen? So that kind of pissed me off. Well, seriously. I mean, nowhere in Greek mythology has you know Zeus gotten so pissed that he killed Ares. And where does a god go when he dies? Keith, uh, I, I I don't you know <laughs> <laughs> that. And so the whole movie is is about King Hyperion and him trying to unleash the Titans from Tartarus so that they can kill the gods and take over again. And the Titans are supposed to be these... They're bigger than the gods. The gods happen to find a way to kill the Titans and send them to Tartarus in Greek mythology. But in the movie, they're just like a bunch of zombies kind of things. They're like None of them are named or anything, and they kind of run around and they're super fast, and it's kind of dumb. The, the Titans are zombies. Yes. Well, they're not zombies, but they're these... They're more zombies. like forces of nature than... Oh, okay sentient beings. It's, the movie starts off they're all stuffed together in this cube and they're all like imprisoned in this cube inside of Tartarus which is a mountain. They're in the Tartarus cube. <laughs> they're 
Tartarus is supposed to be like this mountain pit thing inside of Hades, Hades underworld. Um, and so they're just kind of all crammed in this cube kind of thing, just imprisoned, and they can't move. And then when Hyperion frees them, they're these little kind of gremlin-looking things that kind of bounce around, and they're really fast, and they attack stuff, and it's, it's just like... Eh. Was it in 3D? Uh, they did have it in 3D. We didn't see it in 3D. I'm not. I'm not I'm buying into that 3D crap. From what I read of the reviews, there's only a couple spots where it's like, "Oh, cool, 3D," so you're not really missing out. Uh, I can't wait for the 3D fad to just go away. Can't wait for it. Can't happen soon enough, as far as I'm concerned. Anyway, Skyrim. So, um, recently, recently, as in this afternoon, I kind of started so anyway with the let me back up a step with my archer guy uh i haven't even really started the main quest played for about 29 hours or so and didn't really do the main quest was doing all side quests so there's hundreds upon hundreds of hours worth of play time in this thing i know i love it it is awesome <laughs> it just makes me it just makes me smile thinking about that the the one problem, big problem that I have is it's a lot like Oblivion as far as what you do. So in Oblivion, there was the Thieves Guild and the Dark Brotherhood and a couple other things that you could do. You could become a vampire. Um, you, you do all the same things again. Every single Elder Scroll game was the exact same way. Although I think in the one, you could only join one guild. If memory serves. This one you can do multiple, I know. It's just like Oblivion. Because I, I, I finished the Shield Brotherhood. I forget what they're called. The Companions? Yeah, the Companions. I finished that quest, and I'm leader of the Companions. Then I traveled to this other city where the Thieves are, and I started doing the, the Thieves quest. And it's essentially the same thing. And then there's the Dark Brotherhood, which is the same kind of thing. You kind of have to like murder people, and then the Dark Brotherhood takes notice and they can invite you into their I haven't done that yet but that's also there um, so anyway I've been doing all of that and haven't really started the main quest and then I restarted doing uh, kind of like a battle mage uh, with a sword in one hand and fire and ice spells in the other hand so just to kind of try that out and then I'll see which one I want to kind of pursue long term yeah I just got an orc orc heavy armor Axe and shield. Uh, the thing is, so the with the mage, I started doing it, and I went through, got to the first main, the second main town, um, and I did the, they killed the first dragon. And with the archer, the guy I was playing first, I didn't do that. I started doing side quests like right away, because when you get to that first main town, that's when the companions say, "Hey, you should join the companions." And so I did that, and that led me down the path of doing all these side quests. So with the mage. I, the one thing was, hey, go do this thing and get this stone, and then that leads you to kill the first dragon. Well, in with the archer guy, I didn't do that. In the mage guy that I'm playing, I happened to go to this one area. I talked to the um, one of the vendors, and he said, go on this side quest and return my dragon claw thing. And so I went and did that. Yeah, I did. I did that with that quest. And I found this dragon stone while I was in there. And then when I went to back to the main town, the dude was like, "I need you to go." So that's kind of where the paths diverged for me. The one I never went to that place and got that dragon stone. The second time I had already gotten it when the guy said, "Go get this dragon stone." And I'm like, "Oh, hey, you mean this thing?" And he's like, "Yeah, that's the thing I want." Yeah, that's what I did as well. And so the annoying thing is with my archer guy i've been trying to figure out how to do the the shout thing so you get these abilities called shouts and i don't know how many there are a couple dozen i think in the game and they're like these special abilities that anyone can use yeah, you use the right bumper on the xbox 360 well it turns out you have to kill a dragon to get a dragon soul in order to use those and since i hadn't started that part of the main quest with my archer i hadn't killed a dragon yet and so i can't use any of the shouts that i found and i've gotten like four of them so now with the mage, at least, I happen... So for any, everybody listening, if you're going to go do side quests and stuff, that's fine, but you should at least do the main quest up to the point where you kill the first dragon. So I killed my second dragon just on accident. 
<laughs> so do you you once you kill a dragon, that's all you need, right? You have yeah. the ability to use any shouts. You don't have to keep killing dragons to use. No, 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 no. Right? You each you unlock for each dragon you kill, you unlock a shout. So it's not like you get to keep you. So you pick one of the the shouts that you have, and you can now use that shout. And then the second dragon you kill, you get to go pick a second. Well, you don't. It's not just dragons because I know with the thief, I haven't killed any dragons, and I have like four shouts. It's like significant plot lines. I can find them. I mean, I I know I have one shout I can use and one shout I can't, and I just have to go train in the second one because I've already killed the second dragon. Okay, I got you. Because that I didn't know. Because with my mage, I have one shout, and I can use that shout. With the thief, I've got, like, four shouts, but I can't use any of them. But I really don't know, because I'll be honest, I'm trying not to go on the internet to look at things. I haven't gone on the internet to look at anything with the game. Well, the good news is, is there's not a lot there yet since the game just came out. So even if you do go on, I've looked for a couple of things. Nothing, like, really major, um... And there's not a whole lot of information out there yet, so that's that's the good news, I guess. If you do, if you are tempted, you may have a hard time finding it anyway. It's uh, it's fun. It's a little little gray. Like the game is gray. Yeah, there's not. It's not very colorful. And I don't know if it gets more colorful as you go, but it's just very well. So, and it's it's the game Skyrim as a. I don't know what it is. It's not like a country, I guess. It's not the entire world because they mention like Morrowind in certain places. So the other games are mentioned. It's very like Icelandic. Well, that's what, yeah, that's what the Nords are. Yeah, Nordic in theme. So it's a lot of snow. It's it's very Northrend like from World of Warcraft. If if you played that expansion. Um so yeah, it's kind of dark and gray, and it's a lot. There's a lot of snowy areas and a lot of mountains with snow and that kind of stuff. The other cool thing is in Oblivion. One of the worst things in Oblivion was like go over here to this cave where all these mages are and kill them and bring me back this thing. And like all of the caves, there's like three caves, three cave layouts, and you go in and it's all the same. At least in in this game so far, all of the different areas that you go into for quests and stuff, they're all unique. So far, as I can tell, there, there's not like duplicated layouts like there was in Oblivion. Are there any races like Sue's not a, a big fan of the orc? I like the orc. Are there any races you don't particularly like? I think the elves look a hell of a lot cooler. The elves do look cool. Uh, I picked the cat person for my um, archer. His his racial ability kind of sucks. He's got like night vision, which I n wind up never using. Um, I never use the orcs berserker rage anyway either. Lizard people, I kind of don't care for. I think the guys look cool. The females don't look very good. I also don't think the female cats look very good. No, they don't. Well, the most of the fem the human females look okay. Um, but that's about it. Yeah, in general, the females don't look great. Overall, I'm still very impressed with the graphics. Just the, the difference between the two of them. My game seems to be a little laggy at times. Like when I move the mouse around to click on things, a lot of times it moves really slow, and then other times it's fine. So I don't know if that's a graphical issue or if there's something else. But So what computer are you running it on, your Mac? Yeah, running it on my Mac in booting into Windows, obviously. And it's the iMac? Yeah. I mean, my video the video card's not the greatest. The processor and memory are fine. I mean, I've got eight cores and eight, four or eight cores and like eight gig of RAM. Four. You have quad core. All right. Four. Yeah. Four cores and eight gig of RAM. So that's not the problem. The video card's not the greatest, I know. But I don't know that that's the problem. You know what I mean? I think it might just be a game issue because sometimes it moves around just fine. And I don't have any problems. And then other times it's like I'll go to move the, the mouse to, to point at something and it go it kind of feels like it's lagging it doesn't jerk it's just really slow like the the mouse speed was reduced um and then there's other times like i'll go to you get the you talking to somebody and you get the list of things that you can click on to say and i'll go to click on one and it won't highlight and a couple of times i've like said the wrong thing because i've pointed at it and clicked on it but the other thing was highlighted 
So that that is definitely a game issue. So is it worth the sixty dollars? Oh, absolutely. I'll be playing this game forever. And this game just came out. Oblivion had what four, four or five downloadable content things. There's going to be a ton of them for this game too. I know. I was still playing Oblivion this year. I mean, well, they did fall. Bethesda did Fallout Three as well, and they just yeah. You know, I let I let a friend borrow it, and I've never gotten it back. <laughs> Fallout is good as well. I like that game a lot too. They just released downloadable content for Fallout either this year or late last year. Or yeah, late last year. And Fallout came out in 2008, 2009. They're still releasing content for Fallout 3 or New Vegas. Uh, oh, you know what? It might have been New Vegas. It was Vegas, yeah. But Vegas was essentially, a, in my opinion, New Vegas was an add on for Fallout 3. Because nothing really changed. It was just different. I mean, you couldn't carry your character over, but it was the game was exactly the same. You know what I mean? It was no different. Uh, anyway, so there's going to be a ton, I'm sure, of downloadable content for, for Skyrim, which is cool. Did they offer ever any, like, incentives for, like, the, the, the like, you know, downloadable content now, like, horse armor? Uh, I don't know. I don't even know if you can still buy horse armor. Uh, well, they, they always do the thing where, after they've released a few of the downloadable contents, they have, like, Game of the Year edition or something, where they bundle it all in. So you're still paying like 40 or 50 bucks for Fallout, but you get Fallout and all of the DLC for it. So it's definitely worth it. So there, I guess there's some incentives. The horse armor was, I think, might have been unique to the 360, and that wasn't really downloadable content. It was downloadable content, but it wasn't an, an add-on. It was just horse armor. You know, I got to say, because Sue and I ran out, because we, we bought, the obviously, for the 360, and we went up there to pick it up, and I figured that there wasn't going to be anyone there. We were just like, all right, we'll stroll up there. We got up there about, I don't know, five after, maybe ten after, and there was a line going around the corner of the mall and we were, we were both kind of stunned i would have never thought that uh yeah especially with like modern warfare that is exactly it i mean it was insane and it was all everyone that was there getting skyrim i know there's tons of users on steam playing it they broke records with the number of users playing skyrim over modern warfare well, like i said that just kind of boggles my mind because modern warfare was just released and skyrim single player only not not multiplayer exactly and on my friends list, there's only two people who also have purchased Skyrim. Well, I bought it. It's not going to show up on your Steam, though. Oh, I know. I'm just saying. I, I knew it would be popular because it's, it's an Elder Scrolls game and they're always popular. It surprised me with how popular it really is, I guess. Because, let's face it, single-player fantasy role-playing games aren't the... It's <laughs> true. Or in the the cash cow. If you're doing the fantasy thing, like MMOs and multiplayer stuff is popular, and then, you know. Yeah, but that's what I mean. Warcraft is pretty much your fix for any kind of fantasy thing. So, but it's, uh, it, it was, it was, it was really surprising how many people there were. And it was cold that night, too. <laughs> we weren't out there that long, but it was cold. Buy a horse if you haven't already. Horses are very useful. I haven't. I bought a I bought a house because I didn't know where to put my dragon bones and dragon skin. And I'm sorry, they're dragon bones. I have to be able to use them to craft something. I agree. I had to buy a house to put them in. That's what I'm doing now with my mage. At least I'm saving up for a house because it's like five grand for a house. Yes, I I did buy a house. It's a thousand for a horse, but the horses. Oh, that's what I was going to say before. Now that I remember, that's the other thing that I hate. If you buy a horse, horses are very annoying because if you're riding the horse and something like attacks and you get off the horse to attack the thing, mm -hmm. the horse acts as like a companion and the horse will attack things. And if the horse dies, you lose your horse. But then the horse, it's also a friggin' horse. It's a giant thing. So trying to like hit a wolf that is attacking your horse when you wish it was attacking you, you hit the horse. The horse is always in the way. It is infuriating. I want the horse, if I'm attacking something, I want to get off the horse. I want the horse to run away so that I can attack the thing and not have the horse be in the way. See, I don't have a horse. Did you get the chick, 
Did, did the king give you the chick? With my mage, I got the chick because I got that far. With the uh, archer, once you complete the um, what are they called again? The companions. Once you complete the companion quest line, there's like f- one, two, three. There's four people. I th- no, there's like five or six people left without giving anything away in the companion brotherhood, and any one of them you can ask to be your companion. Oh, okay. And by the way, when I mean the chick, there's, when you do a line of quests, you get granted a house Carl, who's this chick named Lydia. Yeah. Um, who basically is like a companion that runs around with you. I, I brought on a handful of quests until I bought the house, and then she like just took up residence. In fact, earlier today I was playing, and I walk in the house, and a guard is leaving. So I think this chick is f***ing guards in my house. <laughs> because why else is a guard sitting in my house when I get back from adventuring? And she's just up there sitting in my bedroom eating a loaf of bread. So I yeah. think she's banging the town guard <laughs> while I'm gone. But it's well, cool. what else is she going to do? Mind. You leave her there. Oh, I don't mind. I do have Lydia with my mage. Like I said, uh, the companions, you can pick any one of them to come with you. And it, it's cool because they do different things. Like there's there's two twins who are like melee fighters. And you can have either one of them go with you. And then there's the chick who is an archer slash melee person. So when the things are far away, she shoots her bow. And when they get up close, she switches to a sword. So they're like different companions that you can ask to come along with you. Um, one of them, I found some guy somewhere along the way, is a mage. So, you know, you can have a mage tag along with you wherever you want to go. So that's kind of cool, too. But yeah, so the horse uh, acts as a companion and will attack things. The, the cool thing about the companions, though, is that they don't ever die. Like, if they take enough damage to get killed, they just kind of fall over, and they don't attack. They can't attack or anything until they regenerate some health, but they don't die. So your horse. So you buy a horse, and you pretty much you got your horse? You have your horse, but it can die if it takes too much damage. Wait, I thought you just said that it can fall down, but not... Or is that only the companions? Only the, only the human companions. They don't die. Well, f*** them. I want my horse. I know. I can't ride them. You pay $1,000 for a horse, and it can die, and it sucks. Um, but the cool thing with the horse is... They make more. Well, you ride it around, and then if you fast travel someplace, the horse appears, like, right there with you. So it's not like, you know, you leave the horse in town and you fast travel to some quest hub, and then you don't have your horse anymore. Your horse fast travels with you, so that's kind of cool. But yeah, your horse can die, which... So I No, I haven't let the horse die and then fast traveled somewhere to see if he'll reappear. I don't think he will, though. So if your when your horse dies, can you at least get meat off of it? Yes, you can. Excellent. No, you can what? get you can get horse hide, okay. not meat. Because it did die once, and I happened to loot it. Because I'm going to make a suit of armor made only out of my fallen horses. <laughs> so that's it. It's kind of but horses are very handy because they're very fast, and you can travel between areas that you haven't visited yet. So they're. They're very handy to have, but they're, so it's one or the other. It would be nice if they were a companion, acted like a companion and couldn't die like companions, or if they just ran away or at least out of the way when you were in battle. But no, like if you march up on a horse up to like a tower thing and there's archers and they start shooting at the horse, the horse will actually go chase them. <laughs> and the horse is like, F- that, man. that son of a bitch shot me. It's like you have Bob for a horse. And it sucks. It's annoying as hell. And then the other thing they need is, so if you get off the horse and you do it, it, you're thinking ahead, there's, hey, there's this thing up here and there's going to be bad guys. I'll get off the horse here and walk up so that the stupid horse won't attack them. And then you walk back thinking where your horse was and you lose him and you don't know where he is. Now, you, like I said, you can get him back by fast traveling somewhere, but they need like a freaking horse whistle so that like, you know, when you're done killing the things over here, you just blow the whistle and the horse comes trottling along up behind you and so you can get back on him instead of having to go find him. But yeah, buy a horse. Definitely worth it. Just don't let him die. Save a lot. If I, You don't know. It's more for other people, but you definitely need to save a lot. I'm, I'm going to make a suit of armor from my fallen horse's skin. <laughs> I like to give myself mini quests that really aren't part of the game. Like, <laughs> in Oblivion, Sue tried to collect every piece of crumpled paper. We both had uh, baskets that were filled with gem. We would have trash bag bas- baskets all lined up in the uh, in our bedrooms, both of us, and just filled with gems, <laughs> just because it was funny. <laughs> so we always had little quests inside the game, and my 
one of my quests will now be to make a suit of armor from my the hides of my fallen horses. That's going to be an expensive suit of armor, though, because doesn't matter. Each horse is going to cost you a grand. That's fine. It's it's a light. It's a career long quest. And besides, it's not like I'm trying to get my horses killed. Okay. I'm just saying. Before you do that, though, you might want to you know make sure that I'm no. <laughs> Make sure, don't go buying, you know, ten spending ten grand on horses. Make sure that if your horse dies, you can't get him back somehow by like fast traveling to one of the uh, uh, stables. You know, like there's stables right outside. Outside, I'm just gonna buy him and slit his throat on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to buy this horse. All right, I'll just let it bleed out. All right, I want to skin it now. And just leave the carcass there. Thanks, dude. I'll be I'll be back after I hit another dungeon up to get another one of the horses. One of my side quests, which I haven't successfully done yet, because it's just kind of if I get it done, that'll be cool. Is in one of the one of the main towns there, the one where the companions live, where the the Jarl dude, where you get Lydia. Right outside of his area, there's a dude that just stands outside. He's like a, a doomsday preacher, and he just stands outside and screams all day long. I've tried to kill him a couple of times, but every time you attack him, all the guards attack you. So I'm, I've tried a couple of times to stealthfully kill him so that he'll shut the hell up. Oh, I like that dude. I don't like him. Sooner or later, I'll, I'll kill him. I should have named my guy Buffalo Bill. Buffalo Bill? Yeah, because then I could like wear the horse's hide and dance around in the horses. <laughs> she, a great big, she a great big fat horse. <laughs> I like to dress up like horses. I'm sorry, I find that very amusing. Well, we've been yakking for 35 minutes. Is that enough? Yeah, I think that's enough. So, uh, any final uh, words for the Skyrim episode? They Oblivion was an awesome game, and Skyrim is just as good, if not better, because they fixed a lot of the annoying things. No, it, it's it's better. There's no... Well, yeah. It, okay. It's definitely better than Oblivion. Um, because they fixed a lot of the annoying things, and it is a lot of fun, and I've played for 33 hours, and... I'm about to go play some more. Yeah, and we'll be playing for many, many, many more. I did break occasionally to play Dungeon Defenders with, with people, though. Yeah, I saw that, and I almost joined you, like... That game is very good, dude. You, it's worth 15 bucks. It is worth 15 bucks. Even if you're playing in the middle of a Skyrim craze right now, it's it's a good game. We can talk it next weekend. Okay. Yeah, you guys can push your stop buttons right now. Go Browns and go Ohio State. I'm actually kind of glad Ohio State lost. Wow, mine's going to be really easy to edit. <laughs>